614 tank destroyer battalion during World War II. I trained as a medic, and I still carried a gun. Every man in our company was black. The army didn't know what to do with us other than they didn't want us fighting with the white men. Klimbach. Klimbach was that little French town up there near the border with Germany, and we were ordered to take it. Now, the Krauts took out three of the four anti-tank guns we had. But there was no way in hell we were letting them get the better of us. We were determined to show we was just as good, if not better, than every other soldier in the service. I, I don't like talking about the medals I got over there. Only way a man survives something like that is through the grace of God. Doesn't seem right celebrating a little piece of tin. No one knows I helped Lincoln except for you and John Donovan. Not that I'm keeping it a secret, mind you. Just that nobody ever came around and asked about it. What's this all about? Getting ready for some company? Barbieri should be here any minute now. Barbieri's coming here. So he claims. Never known a man to be a liar. I <laughs> just got off the phone with him. I told him if he wanted to settle up, he'd be here waiting. For fuck's sake, Burke, you don't ever tell your enemy when and where you're gonna set up Ah, Christ, you're much too serious about all this. <laughs> it takes the fun out of it. Besides, that's the worst that could happen. You could get us all killed. Aye, that I could. It's all right. It's just Mickey. Butcher and his boys are right behind me. You sure? If there's one benefit to being your miserable daughter, it's I know what a posse of Dago assholes out for blood looks like. I'll call them out with a spotlight on the water tower. I loaded up some barrels with a special petrol mixer cooked up. I scatter them across the yard. A bullet will take them out. So don't be close to them when they blow. I'm gonna snipe those guinea fucks from the crane. You should head up to the roof. One last thing. You try to cut and run, I'll plant you myself. We clear? I'll see you when this is done. You might. You all right back there, lass? What's that? My die asking how I'm doing? Whatever have I done to warrant such fucking concerns? Ah, oh, shite, girl. A simple yes or no would have been fine. Left, 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 left! Hey, 
me float up your boobie. Over there, shoot him for fuck's sake. Don't forget the little surprise I cooked up for those giddy fucks. We'll set your mom flowers. Hit him now. I got you covered. Fuck you, you fucking cocksucker! Goddamn eggplants here, Chucky! Hey, I don't give two fucks about Burke's little pet nigglet. I want the mink alive. Got it? I'm gonna give him an ass fucking. He's never gonna fucking forget. Bring him back fucking alive, that cocksucker! Trying to get my head. Hit him with a Molotov! Ah, coming down. Should have saved a bullet or two. The nigger and a mech working together. Fuck me. I never thought I'd live to see the day. What can I say? Brave new world. Shall I leave then? I see the legs still giving you fits, huh, fucko? Ah, oh, fuck you. You won't be so cocky once I take the acetylene to you. Fuck you! What do you think happens next, huh? You're gonna die, motherfucker. You're gonna hold next to me. You, your whole organization. You're gonna suck my dick in hell.
grab his legs. Time to get him into the garage. Fat cunt. We were never able to reconstruct precisely what happened to Barbieri, primarily because his body wasn't found until the mid-1980s. The Army Corps of Engineers was dredging the bottom of the Mississippi River, and his remains were found in the trunk of an old car. Both legs were broken so many times, there was barely any bone left. Explosions at the salvage yard? Shit's getting out of control. They'll not leave thee, thy lone one, to pine on the stem. Since the lonely are sleeping, go sleep there with him. You already finished with Barbieri? Barbieri? No. By a long shot. Already told you. Day slow. As for you, show up like Lazarus himself. Name thing in a May self. This chalky bastard is either. One of the luckiest sons of betches that's ever lived. Or the kind of man that invades rotten, damn luck. So goddamn sure it was the latter. <laughs> I have to admit, I was wrong about you. You can thank me by calling me by my name. Die. Lincoln it is, then. That was funny. Things get taken from us. We convince ourselves we go out and inflict the pain on someone else. A little man that's busted up inside of us. But it doesn't, does It done. Spent my entire goddamn life scratching and clawing at anyone who came along. Even if they were there to help. <laughs> Look where it fucking got me. It's the sense of changing. <sighs> Only way is forward. Now that Irish Point is back under your control, I'm gonna need you to bring in as much money as you can. Uh, Going after Marcano ain't gonna be cheap. Uh, I imagine you'll be wanting your cut of the proceeds. That's right. <laughs> Can't say I'm a fan of someone looming over me. But a deal's a deal. I asked Nikki to manage those moonshine runs, but she can't bring them all on her own. That liquor hauls in a fair amount. We'll talk to her. She's around here somewhere if she ain't out quail hunting. Quail ain't in season. Oh, for her kind, it's always in season. <sighs> now. Oh, fuck. You'll excuse me. Oh, I have to go to see Mr. Barbieri. He's probably getting a little... lonely. <laughs> lonely.
Thanks for earlier. My old man used to be whip smart. If anyone tried to pull some shit on him, he saw it coming a mile away. Now, fuck. Maggie barely knows the goddamn day of the week. Said you could use some help. Some of our bars are down the bayou. If you could get the shine from them and bring it back, it'd make my life a lot easier. The bayou ain't exactly my favorite place in the world. Come on now, the redneck assholes that live down there just love it when black folks drop by for a visit. <laughs> Ain't been time for small talk, but where you at with all this? All I really want is for everything to go back the way that it was. Before Vietnam, before that night, back when everything felt normal. At least our version of it, anyway. We are the righteously fucked. Danny. Was he in any pain? Did he suffer? Don't. Ain't nothing good coming from that. Who says I need good to come from it? Georgie shot him in the head. Looked like he went pretty quick. I hate this fucking town. I better go. Yeah. Okay. Lincoln. Just because Bobby Ev is dead doesn't necessarily mean this neighborhood is firmly in our control. If he's still got any men hanging around, you should think about clearing them out. I can't believe what I'm reading, what I'm hearing on the radio. What you're doing? You knew how it was gonna go down. I sat right there and told you. Maybe I'm just realizing there's a difference between hearing about something in the abstract and seeing it splash across the front page in a newspaper. You didn't think I'd go through with it? I... I don't... No, I knew. I knew as soon as you regained consciousness, I could see it. I, I look at you, I see who you were. A little boy who didn't have much, but who also wasn't angry about it. A little boy who shared, who laughed, who, who just enjoyed being. I wonder what happened to him. He finally realized how things work. <laughs> Is that so? How many times was the orphanage vandalized by rednecks? How many times did we have to drive around asking restaurants for their leftovers because we didn't have nothing else to eat? Did we have to deal with racist assholes? Sure. But whenever they did some folks come around and help us. White, black, Baptist, Lutheran, you name it. You know how all you boys got new jackets on Christmas? Those came from an old white woman, a Calvinist. She spent the entire year making them. If all you ever look for is evil, it's all you ever gonna see. I gotta go. I... I never wanted this for you, Lincoln. I wanted you to have a good life. Who are we shooting? Didn't you hear? We're about to find ourselves in the middle of a race war. I've seen you shoot. I think I'll be aye. Hey, with this fucking rifle, I'm Wild Bill Hickok. So, how's the Padre handling all this? 
You know, the bloody path of mayhem and revenge you've embarked upon? Still not happy about it. Thinks you're most likely the devil. <laughs> you know, I had a look at his service record. Oh, settle down. I was just curious. He was a medic, but he saw action at Klimbaugh with a 614th. He was credited with taking out two crowd tanks on top of the 16 men he shot. A lot of killing for a would-be priest. That was different. It was during a war. And this isn't? Look, I'm just saying, we didn't win that war by worrying about hurting someone's feelings. We won it by bombing the crowd to nips back to the Stone Age. The Padre'd be wise to remember that. Yeah, maybe. I'll catch you later. You're not still sore about me looking into the Padre, are you? Don't tell me you weren't at least... The man himself, Mr. Vito Scaletta. You gotta be shitting me. Last couple months have been pretty tough on old Vito. Sal's always hated him. Thought he was a mole for the commission, but he couldn't do anything about it because Vito's made. After the heist, Sal refused to pay Vito his cut, and then he put the clamps on him. He's been trying to limit Vito's ability to pay what's owed. And if Scaletta can't kick up, the commissioner give Marcano permission to whack him. The only reason that Vito is still above ground is because he has a couple off-the-record businesses. He's been using that money to pay Sal. Gotta give Scaletta credit. Pretty goddamn tenacious. He's lasted a lot longer than I thought he would, but the clock is ticking. A couple weeks ago, Sal sent in his nephew, a kid named Michael Greco, to help Vito run River Row. Greco's been using his guys to limit what Vito can do, where he can go. Once he has Vito completely boxed in, he'll make his move. Scaletta has to know what Greco has planned. I'll pay him a visit. See if I can leverage this thing with Greco to bring Scaletta around in my way of thinking. I'm sure I'll appreciate your concern.